Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this inexpensive Android box and see if it would be worth picking one of these up as a little retro console. Now, as making this video, Raspberry Pis are a bit hard to find. I mean, you can find them, but the price is going to be hiked up. I've seen some people scalping them on eBay. So, I picked up an inexpensive Android box for $32. This is the HK1 box, powered by an Amlogic CPU. You can actually get these with the upgraded storage of 128 gigabytes for around 55, but 32 will work out for me. It does have Android installed on it, ready to go. We've got access to Google Play. And with this HK1 box, we can install something like EMU Elect or Bado Serra from a micro SD card. So I've been a big fan of these little Android boxes for a while now, and one of the main reasons is the price on them. You can find some of these as low as 20 bucks with that Amlogic CPU, but the one I have here I got for $32. If you opt to get this on Amazon, you can get it shipped quicker in the US, but it's going to be a bit more expensive. We also get our power supply, HDMI cable, and a remote. So the game controller you're seeing beside this was purchased separately. These are relatively cheap on eBay and Amazon, and one of the main reasons I opted to get this one is because it does have a 2.4 GHz dongle. You're going to plug this into one of the free USB ports on the little Android box, and you've got a game controller. But remember, these do have Bluetooth built in, so you can connect an Xbox controller to it if you already have one. And to tell you the truth, if you already have a PS3, PS4, PS5, or even an Xbox controller, I would go with that. But you can pick these wireless controllers up for pretty cheap, and they're not that bad. They're not top of the line, but they will get you by. So all in all, I've got $58 into this little setup here, and I've just pulled the top off to give you a look at the internals. We do have a heatsink on that CPU. This also has 4 gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of internal storage. Plus, we have micro SD card support. So this is known as the HK1 box, and if you're shopping for these, make sure you get one with the Amlogic S905X3. You'll see some with rock chips, but they're not going to perform as well. We've got four cores, up to 1.9 GHz, Mali G31 MP2 GPU, 4 gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, gigabit Ethernet, one USB 3.0 port, one USB 2.0 port, and a micro SD card slot. So the way these sit coming right out of the box, you can actually do some awesome emulation on it with Android, and it's actually a little easier to set up because we do have access to Google Play, and a lot of us already use Android, so we kind of know what we're doing here. But these also support micro SD card boot, and you can run something like Botocera or EMU Elect just to have a full emulation front end operating system running right on this little box. By the end of this video, we will take a look at EMU Elect running on this, but really, when it comes down to it, these actually do a great job with emulation with Android. Plus, we have access to other apps that we can use, like cloud gaming apps and native Android games. So that's really what we're going to be taking a look at with this box in this video. So with this one here, we've got a pretty basic interface. You can use your remote for it. You can also use your controller to navigate the full Android operating system. Got my wireless controller plugged in. It works just like an Xbox controller, or one of my favorite things to do with these boxes is just plug a little wireless mouse and keyboard in. We can navigate everything, get in there really easy, set everything up with that mouse and keyboard, and then just use our remote to start up our games. And when it comes to using Android for emulation, personally, I like to use a lot of standalone emulators. When it comes to the lower end stuff, I'll go with RetroArch, but uh, for like N64, PSP, Dreamcast, and things like that, I do like going standalone. Now another thing we can do is install a totally different launcher, just to make it a lot cleaner. And with this here, we can actually set this up to be the only launcher. So as soon as we boot it up, it'll go right into the Android TV launcher. This is one of my favorites, just because we do have a lot of flexibility. I just set up the apps that I'm really going to be using on this Android box to be right at the main menu here. You can also install a third-party emulation front end like Dig or LaunchBox, and it does work on this little box. But personally, with these setups here, I like using something like the Android TV Launcher because there's actually more apps that I'd like to use than emulation on this setup. We do have access to YouTube, Netflix, and things like that, plus my favorite cloud gaming apps. We can stream from our local PC using Steam Link or Moonlight. And we also have access to native Android games. Now there's a few here that I personally like playing and they do perform pretty well on the S905X3. So here we have Minecraft. 
it's definitely not the best performance that I've seen, but you know, if you got a younger kid, they're going to be more than happy to play Minecraft on this, just like it sits. Now, a little box like this isn't going to run Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG, or Genshin Impact, but some of the older titles that were ported over, like San Andreas, do work really good on this thing. This is uh, from the Google Play Store. This is the Android port of the game. And as you can see here, it is fully playable. I'm even using that wireless controller that I picked up with this whole setup. And when it comes to cloud gaming, Stadia, GeForce Now, or even xCloud or Xbox Game Streaming works great. We do have 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi built in on this little box, but when it comes to cloud gaming, I would always suggest using Ethernet. I've just plugged in my Ethernet cable here. And here we have Forza Horizon 5 streaming from the cloud. This isn't streaming from an Xbox in my house. This is the cloud gaming portion of everything. So all around with these little Android boxes, there's a ton that we can do on them. But, you know, we definitely want to get into some emulation. So let's go ahead and move over there now. It's not going to run PS2 games. It's not going to run GameCube games. But there's still thousands and thousands of games that do work well with the S905X3. And first up, we have PS1. I personally like using RetroArch, like up to PS1. And on this box, I'll even use it for Dreamcast and the Flycast core. But what you're seeing running now is RetroArch with the PC SX Rearm core. We're running Colin McRae Dirt Rally 2, looking great here, running at 60 FPS. And PlayStation 1 runs great on these little chips. Next up, we've got some Dreamcast using RetroArch and the Flycast Core, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Dreamcast doesn't perform super well on the S905X3, whether you're using this core here with RetroArch, the standalone version of Raycast, or even Redream. Just comes down to that CPU speed on the chip itself. Now don't get me wrong, there are some games that will be fully playable with each one of those emulators, but it's not the best performance that I've seen out of these mobile chips. Moving over to some N64, I personally use the standalone version of Mupen 64 Plus FZ, and in the last year or so, I mean, we've gotten really good N64 emulation on a lot of these little Android boxes, and especially these Amlogic boxes. Even a harder game to emulate, like Conker's Bad Fur Day, does perform quite well. Taking it up to PSP, there's lots of games that are going to be fully playable here at 1x using OpenGL or Vulkan. I just happen to be using Vulkan here with Kingdom Hearts, and I don't have any frame skip going on. But I will tell you that, you know, the harder to emulate games just really aren't going to run well. I mean, when it comes to emulation on this little setup, I've kind of noticed that it's about the same as the Raspberry Pi 4. If you wanted to do something like Chains of Olympus, Ghost of Sparta, Kill Zone, or even Midnight Club, even with frame skip on, it's just not going to run great. But that doesn't mean PSP doesn't work on this unit, it's just really the harder to emulate stuff struggles. So you know, anything under what I've shown so far, like NES, SNES, PC Engine, Neo Geo, we've got a lot of FBA, CPS1, 2, and 3 are going to run great. Even DS, using the Drastic Emulator, runs at full speed. This is just a really great emulator, and in my experience, it works on a lot of different chips. So what we've taken a look at so far is running in Android, but like I mentioned, we do have the option to install something like EMU Elect to a micro SD card. Now there's a lot of tutorials out there, I've actually done a couple, and with this box here, there is a little tiny button inside of that 3.5mm audio jack. You need to press this while you're booting it up one time with that micro SD card, and after that, you can actually boot it from that micro SD card with no problem at all. So I'm running this from a 256 gigabyte micro SD card. I've installed all of my games. I've got a couple themes to choose from. I really do like the way this looks. And with some of these emulators, especially with EMU Elect, they've really kind of been optimized for the S905X3. I find that Dreamcast does work a bit better with uh, EMU Elect or Botocera than it does in Android. But then when you move over to N64, it actually works better in Android. So in the end, it's really up to you. I personally think that this is a nice little interface. We've got all of our games listed here. You can download box art. You can set up bezels if you want to. And it's just a nice streamlined emulation front end. It just makes it a lot easier to navigate once you have everything set up correctly. So what we got here is just some Sega Genesis, 
Still using that controller, I did have to set it up with EMU Elect, but it does work over that 2.4 gigahertz dongle that comes with the controller. And like I mentioned, I have done a tutorial video setting EMU Elect up on an Android box. I'll leave a link to that video in the description, and I do need to update it, but you should be able to get everything up and running. Plus, there's tons of information online on how to do this. But just remember, we do have options. You can always just use Android for your emulation needs and your streaming needs. It's really up to you. Or you can go all out and install an operating system to a micro SD card. So in the end, I personally think it would be worth picking something like this up, given the prices of Raspberry Pis and other single board computers. I haven't seen the price on these be, you know, super jacked up. There are some sites that will charge you a little more and say that the box is much better because it does come preloaded. But I would go with a cheap box like the HK1 you saw in this video, and you can have a great time with emulation on this little setup for really cheap, and especially if you already have a controller. Even if you already have just a wired controller, you can plug it right into one of the free USB ports and use it like that until you get a wireless setup. So yeah, if you're looking for a cheap emulation slash cloud gaming slash low-end native Android gaming device, then I can recommend one of these little boxes with that S905X3. I know for sure here that the HK1 does support that micro SD card boot, but if you opt for something else, there's a good chance it will also support it. And before you pick it up, just do a quick Google search and see if you can do that boot from micro SD. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in picking up anything you saw in this video, I will leave some links in the description. You can get them much quicker on Amazon, but they are more expensive, so I'm going to leave a few links down below. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this device, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.